One bitten by bat, one by wolf. Welcome to another movie plot. Enjoy the memories and watch out for spoilers. One to walk the lonely road of mortality. Centuries before the war between vampires and lichens began, three vampire elders decided to ensure their survival by leapfrogging through time, one ruling for 100 years while the other two slumber. During the reign of the strongest elder Victor, the war began, and after four centuries of bloodshed it finally came to an end, when the vampire general Craven killed the lichen leader Lucian, scattering his remaining forces. Victor appointed Craven ruler of their coven before entering his century-long sleep, but after another 600 years the few lichens left refused to perish, and have now grown stronger than ever as they're now no longer governed by the moon but can transform at will. The film begins in Budapest where two vampire death dealers are in the middle of a stakeout. Celine narrates everything I just said while Rigel takes photos of two lichens following a human into a subway. The pair follow and are joined by a third death dealer Nathaniel, as the werewolves begin to gain on their target Michael. The lichen lieutenant Ray smells a trap, and a battle ensues in which Rigel is shot and killed with ultraviolet bullets, unseen by any vampire before now. When his killer attempts to snatch Michael, Celine wings him with a silver bullet so he gives up and begins to flee. The death dealer picks up her teammate's camera and gives chase, where she catches up to Trix having pulled out the bullet and descended into the sewers. Nathaniel remains behind and holds off Ray's until he eventually runs out of bullets and begins to run. The vamp easily runs Big Boy down so he shrugs him off and begins to transform, and despite Nate's pointy teeth he's no match for the larger predator. Back in the sewers Celine hits the 180 on Trix before emptying her clip to be sure, when Ray's drops down but is subdued with throwing stars. As she flees from the wounded beast Celine hears a large gathering of lichens, then gets out before Ray's recovers. A brief glimpse of the room shows the lichens amassing in preparation for an attack, as the freshly transformed Pierce and Taylor are told by their leader to put some clothes on, despite somehow already wearing pants. Celine returns to the mansion that operates as her coven's headquarters to warn them about the lichen army. She shows death dealer Khan the UV bullets having taken Trix's weapon, when Craven comes strutting and acting like it's his home despite it still being Victor's. He eventually agrees to send a search team to check the sewers but sends someone named Soren, as tonight is a party in preparation for Elder Marcus's awakening. In two days' time, the reigning Elder Amelia will be arriving to awaken the third Elder Marcus and put herself into slumber. As Craven's worshipper Erica talks crap about putting on a dress, Celine views the photos that Rigel took and notices the lichens were following Mike. Craven enters as Erica scurries away, he just wants to court Celine, but she spurns him at every turn, as he refuses to believe the stories that werewolves would kidnap a human, despite cutting to a human currently strung up by them. The lichen scientists singe experiments on human blood and attempts to find the right person named Corvin, as Michael's shown to be just that. Ray's returns home with his tail between his legs and tells his boss the bad news, so he says he'll get the human himself. Singe digs the bullets out of tricks but since Celine buried the silver deep in his organs he can't be saved. But Ray's can, as the doctor rips out the throwing stars so his body can regenerate. During the vampire's party, Craven is informed by Erica that Celine has disobeyed his orders and fled the mansion, but doesn't see that she's gone to Michael Corvin's apartment. When he gets home Celine tries interrogate Michael just as they're attacked by half a dozen lichens. Michael escapes onto the elevator as Celine holds them off, successfully taking out multiples with her silver bullets but shooting a hole in the floor and escaping before she gets swarmed. Michael reaches the bottom but comes face to face with the leader. He's suddenly shot by Celine, but he insists on getting a bite in on Michael before she can drag him away. The lichen spits the blood into a vial and then pushes out all of the silver bullets, not even needing Singe's help just the power of squeeze. He races back after the two as they escape in Celine's car, but the lichen easily catches up and puts a retractable blade through the roof into Celine's shoulder. She slams the brakes flicking him off and then runs him over, but he just shrugs it off and returns to the den with a new blood sample for Singe. The doctor analyzes it and identifies Michael as the Corvin they need, but the leader says that in two days time Michael will turn into a werewolf and come to them. While driving, Celine passes out due to blood loss and the car flips into a river, where Michael saves her but passes out. Celine brings him back to the vampire mansion, making Craven jealous as he sees she's attracted to him. Snooping around, Erica looks over Michael and realizes that he's been bitten by a werewolf. As he starts regaining consciousness she leaps to the ceiling and starts hissing at him, so naturally he throws himself out a window onto his back and leaps the fence. Distrusting that Craven could kill a Doberman let alone a lichen warlord, Celine looks into the past and reads an ancient book on the fall of Lucian. Said to have cut the brand from Lucian's dead arm himself, Craven's shown at the same time having a secret meeting with the lichens and his guard Soren. 
Celine notices Lucian's wearing the same medallion that their current leader wears, as he's shown to be one and the same and treats Craven like his pet, saying that he's already bled for him once before when he gave him the flesh from his arm, and to keep his death dealers away from Michael. Against regulations Celine decides to awaken Victor 100 years early, reciting a message for him in the mirror of everything that's transpired recently. She removes his sarcophagus from his place in the mansion's vault and uses her blood to restore all of his organs back to life, implanting all her memories including the mirror message into his head. With nowhere else to go, Michael returns to the mansion where Celine's telling Craven that Victor's back in charge. She picks Michael up and fills him in on the centuries-long war, as Craven enters the vault to the shrill voice of a disappointed Victor. Still in the process of being revitalized, the Elder says that he should have left someone else in charge of his home before demanding Celine be brought to him. The Death Dealer takes Michael to a safe house used by vampires to interrogate Lycan hostages. She explains that the lichen and vampire viruses are incompatible and that no one's ever survived a bite from both species. When she was a child the lichen slaughtered her entire family and it was Victor that saved her, then raised her like his own daughter. Celine then kisses Michael while handcuffing him to a chair with a gun, advising him to use it on himself should he transform before she gets back. As Erica is finally making her move on Craven, Celine arrives back at the mansion cutting the affection short. When he tries confront her yet again about being his wife, she smacks him in the face and rushes into the vault. Celine attempts to explain things but nothing appeases Victor, who's just grumpy for being woken early. He tells her she'll be dealt with when Amelia gets there, and is for now held prisoner in her room by Craven and guarded by Soren. Before leaving Celine asks Craven if he even had the balls to cut the flesh from Lucian's arm himself, or if Lucian did it for him. Hearing all this and waiting until Soren's ordered away, Erica helps Celine escape hoping it'll get her killed by Victor and removed from the picture. The next night when Amelia's train arrives at the station, Craven relieves Khan's team and instead sends Soren and his own team to meet them. When he signals to the guards on board that it's safe to bring Amelia out, the Lycans attack in full force, slaughtering the entire train as Soren watches on not lifting a finger. Celine gets to the safe house and releases Michael, but they're suddenly attacked by a team of Lycans led by Singe himself and packing UV bullets. Making his first feat of supernatural strength, Michael jumps out a window falling five floors onto his feet, but as Celine holds off the waves of attackers, Michael's captured by Pierce and Taylor before his protector can do anything. On the way to their den Michael gets his first glimpse of the full moon and begins the change. But the lichens pull over, and Pierce doses him with an enzyme preventing it. Craven's in the middle of a tense meeting with the Elder when Celine walks in with a still living singe. She forces him to tell them everything, that Lucian's been trying to combine the vampire and lichen virus to create a hybrid of the two, but needs the descendant of a specific bloodline. A long time ago three brothers were made immortal as the result of a plague, one was bitten by a wolf and became the first lichen. Marcus was bitten by a bat and became the original vampire, but a third brother remained human passing down the genetics capable of becoming a hybrid of the two. Using Michael Corvin's blood and the blood extracted by rays from the powerful elder, Lucian plans to make himself a hybrid of both but stronger than either. When Victor hears the name Lucian, the room looks at Craven but he's already begun his escape. Khan sends a team to check on Amelia but finds the whole council slaughtered and reports the news to Victor, who kills Singe in his anger. Meanwhile at the Lycan Den, Lucian explains the truth about what started the war. 600 years ago Lucian and Victor's daughter Sonia fell in love, but fearing a natural blending of the species, Victor had his own daughter burned alive while Lucian was made to watch. He still required the moonlight to transform back then and when night fell, he used it to break free and escape with Sonia's amulet which he still wears today. Craven shows up at the den seeking sanctuary, confirming their initial deception 600 years ago was to gain rule of the coven on Craven's part, and simply to be thought dead on Lucian's. They discuss a new agreement that Lucian will get revenge on Victor and then form a peace treaty with Craven, giving the vamp power over both covens. Just then Pierce hears more vamps entering and locks Soren in a room thinking they've betrayed them, but unrelated to Craven's men the entire coven walks in and drops a grenade into the lichen den, killing Pierce Taylor and a bunch of other werewolves. When Lucian goes to assist, the slimy Craven rat shoots him in the back with a silver nitrate bullet unable to be dug out. By the time Ray's gets back to the den with Amelia's blood his best friend's already unresponsive, but Soren's broken his way out of the room so Ray's decides to target him instead. He separates the vamp from the rest of his team, as Ray's holds a deep-seated hatred for Soren specifically. The dominatrix was Victor's head torturer centuries ago when the Lycans were slaves to vampires, which is why the werewolves were also willing to follow Lucian against their oppressors. He uses his whips to hold Ray's back briefly but the hulking werewolf powers through and gets his revenge. When he smells Victor enter he lets his blood rage get the better of him, rushing the elder alone and getting his neck broken and finished with a sword. At the same time Khan's down to only two men left in his team and is flanked by a beastie and savage. 
As the battle rages on, Celine goes off on her own and shoots her way through hallways of enemies with her new bullets. Before Michael's attack she makes it to him and frees him, as Lucian begins to regain consciousness and is reminded of Sonia and himself when seeing them kiss. Trying to escape they run into Craven having doubled back and he fills Michael with liquid silver. As he lay dying Craven tells Celine the true story about her dark father in hopes that it will sway her to him. It was Victor himself who killed her family but couldn't bring himself to kill Celine as she reminded him of his dear Sonia. Suddenly Lucian runs his blade through Craven's leg and tells Celine to bite Michael, which she does in hopes it will save his life. Craven finishes the Lycan leader who dies accomplishing his mission of creating a hybrid, then flees at the sight of Victor approaching. Celine gets tossed off Michael before Victor takes what he calls an abomination and prepares to kill it. He throws Michael through a wall into the next room where the hybrid begins to transform between the two Corvinus species, ending in his final form. Victor admits to Celine that he killed her parents but says he gave her the gift of immortality, and justifies killing his daughter as protecting his species from being bred out. When he approaches the next room Michael's already behind him, knocking him through the hole before appearing behind him again, then as he stands up again, the faster hybrid begins to win but the much stronger elder catches a punch and lands a devastating combination of his own. A group of death dealers enter and begin to open fire on the new species but Celine drops in and kills at least one of them. Victor and Michael continue their fight but the elder gets the better of the hybrid, when Celine picks up her father's dropped sword and takes a leaping swing over the top of him. About to kill a second daughter, Celine reveals the blood on her blade as half of Victor's head slides off the rest. Whether it fear of the hybrid or respect for the slaying of Victor, the remaining werewolves back away leaving Celine and Michael to escape. Across town at the vampire mansion, Singe's blood has spent all night leaking into the last elder's tomb, causing a rejuvenated Marcus to wake up ready for part two. And the movie ends. There is a descendant of Corvinus lying there. Not three feet from you. So you made it. I appreciate your time. I couldn't have done it without you. Tell your mother I said thanks. <laughs>